What's up everyone, thank you so much for stopping by and hope you guys are all having a good day. I am Josh from Vault Hunters Union and I am here with, uh, I guess you could call it a bit of an instructional video. On a lot of my videos, some people have been writing in the comments and I've also been getting personal messages from people asking me how I create my videos for my YouTube channel, my gameplay videos and my commentaries and stuff like that. And so when I try and explain them, um, a lot of people who are new to the whole commentary and the editing process are not really sure what programs to use and how to use them. So what I've decided to do is show you guys the programs that I use and the settings I use in those programs to achieve the certain level of quality that I expect and that I get out of my videos. So we're not going to waste any time. We're just going to go ahead and get started on this. Now I should let you know that this is not an actual video. This is a slideshow. However, there are screenshots, very detailed screenshots, and I'll also be talking to explain everything in great detail so you uh, you don't get lost. Now I'm going to let you guys know I actually only use two programs for 90% of my videos. Probably about 90% of my videos are live commentary. Sometimes I do other videos where voice editing is needed needed after so I you know it's not live I'm not recording the thing live I, I added over top of video or images and stuff like that just like this video so in that case I do use the third program which we will cover as well but in general I use two main programs but you are going to need all three if you're going to learn how to do videos properly the way I do them anyway those three programs are MSI Afterburner Sony Vegas Pro 11 or 10 or 12 or whatever version you would like they're all work pretty much the same and very simple and you're also going to need Audacity. Now, MSI and Audacity are free to download. Sony Vegas 11 does cost, so you're going to have to make that purchase or download at your own risk. So the first piece of software we're going to take a look at today is MSI Afterburner. This is what I use to record my gameplay as well as my commentary. I know some people like to record their gameplay and commentary separately and kind of mesh them together. That can be okay, but for me it's kind of a pain in the ass because you kind of have to line them up perfectly and it, it can be just a pain in the ass. So I like to record them together and MSI Afterburner is unique because it does allow you to record from two audio sources so you can record a mic and gameplay at the same time and for me it just works perfect. So when you get MSI Afterburner open you're going to see two windows, one on the left and one on the right. The one on the right just shows your GPU power power percentage as well as your temperature. I have two GPUs so it is showing both for me. We're going to focus on the left. In the bottom right of that you're going to see the settings button. I want you to just click on that. Next you're going to see a small window pop up here with a bunch of tabs along the top. General fan, monitoring, on screen display, etc. If you're going to scroll to the right, if you need to use the left and right arrow, you go to the right and you'll see one that says video capture. Go ahead and uh, click on that one. So basically on your screen now you are seeing the video capture tab. So for anyone who's new to MSI Afterburner, I'm just going to quickly go over everything. But if you simply just copy my settings, you will get the best video quality you can get. Video capture key is the end key for me. So you click on that, push any button you want. Basically that's the button you're going to push to start and stop recording. Video format, MJPG compression. Uh, I find that always works in Sony Vegas without issues. I always record at 100% quality and frame size. You can record at whatever, 16 by 9, 1080p or 720p. It depends if you want to render in 1080p. Um, you obviously have to record in 1080p. I render usually in 720p, but I'll record in 1080p just in case I want to render in 1080p. But uh, it also allows you to downscale to 720 in Sony Vegas. Frame limit, frame rate limit is disabled for me. I would dis disable that. That's your frame rate limit when you're in game, whether you're recording or not. I disable it so that I can play in 100 frames per second or whatever if I want to, but it only records at 35. So you are going to only want to record at about 35 frames per second. YouTube plays back at about 33, so having a little bit more is okay. You'd better to have more than less. Videos folder is the D drive. You can have that save wherever you want. Multi-thread optimization below in the video capture compatibility properties. I'm not sure what that means. I keep it automatic and I enable gamma correction just in case the game is a little too dark. Now the most important thing is going to be underneath for the audio capture. If you're going to be doing your mic and your gameplay at the same time, you're going to strictly follow these guidelines. WS API playback device, that's going to be where is the sound coming from in the game. So if you have your sound coming through speakers, like external speakers, you're going to select those. But make sure you select WS API playback device, then select it. I have my sound and my mic coming through my headset. So I select my headset, then I select WAS API capture device and also select my headset. So when I push record, it's going to record the sound from the game and it's also going to record my headset. Now you definitely want to select down mix multi-channel audio to stereo and then in the drop down menu on the right, click stereo mix and then also mix multiple audio tracks. I don't know what the meaning of those are but that's the only way I could get it all to load in MSI Afterburner. So as long as you copied those settings correctly, you are able to now go in game and hit record, whatever button you chose to record. So go ahead and play your game and record any gameplay footage you have uh, chosen to record and then report back when you are done. So now what I want you guys to do after you have your gameplay footage recorded is open up Sony Vegas Pro 11. I use 11 for this demonstration. You can also use 10 or 12. I'm sure I haven't used 12 yet before, but we're going to go ahead and use 11. When you open up the uh, Sony Vegas, a new project window should pop up. If it doesn't, click on File in the top left and go to New. 
and uh, basically you're going to go ahead and copy these settings. The only thing that is really important that you have on the screen is to have the pixel aspect ratio at 1.00 for square otherwise it can affect the video output. Um, sometimes it can get a letterbox and stuff like that so I leave it a square. Underneath on below you're going to see pixel format. I keep it at 32 bits so it's the full range of pixels. Underneath that full resolution quality best motion blur type Gaussian. The only other thing you really need to change is at the top there's the template. There's HD 720 by 720-30p. Um, basically that's saying you're going to render your video in 720p. If you're going to switch that if you want to have it at 1080p obviously you're going to click that menu and find 1080p. And then once you have all your settings chosen, as long as you match your other settings and chosen your resolution, go ahead and click OK. So we are actually already almost able to load our video into Sony Vegas and begin editing, but we have one more step we have to take first. What the step is going to do is tell Sony Vegas what resources and how much of each resource it is going to use in order to render those videos, and I'll explain more about what that means, but in order to get to this menu, you're going to click on the Options menu and click on Preferences. Now there are a ton of different tabs that are going to pop up on the menu that pops up on your screen here. We're going to ignore them all for right now. The only thing we're going to click on is the video tab. So under the video tab there are a lot of different things we can change here today but we are actually going to only pay attention to the first three. That is the dynamic RAM preview, the maximum number of running threads, and GPU acceleration of video processing. The first item on the list is dynamic RAM. If you look to the right of the actual number zero there you can see the max available is 7084 megabytes. In my case it's going to be different for everybody based on how much RAM you have in your computer. That number just shows how many megabytes of free RAM you have on your computer based on how much your system is using. I have 7084 in my case so I can apply up to 7084 megabytes of RAM solely towards rendering the video. This is going to make the video render faster but it is going to make your computer run slower if you plan on running other tasks in the background. Underneath that you are going to have maximum number of rendering threads. This the thread is basically if you look on Sony Vegas once we get a video in there you can see on the uh, under just behind the menu in the bottom you're going to see the sound waves and then a video file on top of that. Each one of those is one thread so a video file is one thread, audio is one thread, anything else you throw in there is another thread. So if I have it at one it's only going to render the video first and then the audio second. So if you set it at like two threads or three threads or four threads if you have that many threads going on in your videos um, obviously you are going to render your videos a lot faster so choose at your own discretion. Underneath that is the final option that is a GPU acceleration of video processing. This basically allows you um, basically when you're rendering a video it takes a huge toll on your CPU and RAM. Those are the two main resources that are used to render videos. You can basically turn on GPU acceleration and then that allows you to use uh, any graphics card you have to basically assist them and that obviously will help rendering get done much quicker as well. Now these settings are going to be the most crucial to the quality of your video. So I use for dynamic RAM I use zero megabytes of RAM. For rendering threads I do one and GPU acceleration I have it off. Now the reason for that is while you may render your videos faster, the faster a video renders the more quality you're going to lose. So I have it set on zero megabytes of RAM, one thread and no GPU acceleration. This takes the longest to render a video but it ensures the absolute best quality. You don't want to rush it because you don't want to hinder your video quality and yes there is a huge difference between zero megabytes and a hundred. Like it's a huge difference. For those of you who are wondering with these settings basically with like a five minute video at 720p it takes roughly 20 minutes or so to render a video. Uh, for something longer than that um, some of my gameplay videos are about 30 minutes long. It will take about two hours maybe a little bit more sometimes a little bit less depending on what's going on in the video. 1080p obviously is going to take several hours maybe four or five hours at these settings but you are going to get the best quality video. What I usually do is if I'm rendering a long video I will render it right before I go to bed and I'll go to bed and when I wake up it's going to be done. So basically after you have all the settings chosen you're going to go ahead and hit apply and hit OK. So we are ready to go ahead and add our video into Sony Vegas so what you're going to do is open up the Explorer and find your video and click and drag it into the, the time menu in Sony Vegas and that's going to be the bottom there where you see the audio and the video screens. Uh, those will appear automatically once you click and drag your video and let it go onto that screen. So upon clicking and dragging your video file into Sony Vegas, you're going to see two threads appear. One's going to be your audio, one's going to be your video. What you're going to do is go to the end of the video tab uh, to the video line and you're going to see basically the there's going to be two little icons. The one that you're going to select is highlighted. The bottom one is event effects. The top one is event pan slash crop and that's going to be the one that you click on. This is a really quick setting that we're going to change but it is very important. You're going to see a bunch of blue icons on the side, position, rotation, keyframe, source, and workspace. You're going to expand the source one if it's not already expanded. Uh, you're going to see two things, maintain aspect ratio and stretch to fill frame. They're both going to say yes. You want to change the maintain aspect ratio 
to know. What this does is basically the game it will be recorded. MSI is going to record in a certain aspect ratio. If you allow it to maintain that aspect ratio, when you render the video, you're going to see frames. Uh, you're going to see the black lines along the top or the bottom or even the left or the right because it's going to want to stretch it into letterbox format. So you want to tell it no, you want it to be the full screen. There is no apply or OK for this menu. Once you have selected no, you're just going to go ahead and click the X in the top right corner. So if we wanted to, we could go ahead and render this video now in Sony Vegas, but there is one more thing we're going to do to enhance the quality of the video. When MSI records, sometimes it can take away some of the color and gamma quality of the video. So what we're going to do is use some of Sony Vegas's powerful features to enhance the quality of the color as well as the gamma. So what you're going to do is click on the video effects tab. Underneath there you're going to see the Project Media Explorer, Transitions, Video Effects. You're going to click Video Effects. So basically once you click that there's going to be a lot of different options that are going to appear on the left in the drop down format. What you're going to click on is Color, Corrector, and in brackets secondary. There are two, you want to click on the secondary one. Now first things first, you're going to want to click on somewhere on your video in the bottom there on the where you see the time of how long the video is and you're going to see your preview. You're going to want to click anywhere on there to get your video to appear on the top right in the preview screen just to make sure that you're doing this correctly. The next thing you're going to do is click on, there's going to be seven different options that appear. There's dark and mid, salurate, greens, invert color, whatever. The, first, the only one you're going to click on is the one that says default in brackets. You're going to click on that and click and drag it over top of your video. Now once you do that another menu is going to pop up and it's going to show a lot of different features. The only ones that we're going to pay attention to are the two that are highlighted. That's the saturation and the gamma. The saturation basically is the level of color in the video. Gamma is the lighting and the darkness of the video. So what we're going to do is saturation here and gamma will both be at 1.0. Saturation if you put it at 1.877 that's going to be as colorful as it can get. Uh, after that it starts to become really ugly. Sometimes even 1.877 can be ugly so my recommendation is to start at 1.5. 1.5 is usually pretty good and make your way up uh, each game that you're going to play every environment is going to be different gamma you're only going to want to change if the videos are darker i do a lot of gameplay videos from fallout new vegas and in my mod reviews we are at doc mitchell's house a lot and the uh, house can be a little bit dark so i'll turn the gamma up but you don't want to turn it up a whole lot otherwise it can take away from the quality of the video uh, it starts at 1.0 i'd make it no more than 1.1 to 1.3 Basically to do this, you're going to basically just highlight the 000, type in 1.5 or whatever you want, then press enter. Then do the same thing for gamma, type in your value, press enter, and then again, there is no OK button. You're just going to go ahead and close the window. And that's pretty much it for my video editing. So we are ready to go ahead and render this video and compress it to whatever format we choose. So we're going to go ahead and click on file and then click on render as. Now, if you guys are using Sony Vegas 11, you're going to see exactly what I see here. Your output file and your output format. What we're going to do is go underneath those for right now to render options that may be minimized. You're going to expand it and then you're going to click on stretch video to fill output frame size. That's basically, you're gonna, it's going to be unchecked. You want to check it. That's basically telling it that you want it to not letterbox the screen. You want it to fill the entire frame. So now our video is finally completely edited and ready to render. The only important thing we have to do still on this menu is select the format of the video that we are going to render. So what you're going to do is under the output format, you're going to select Windows Media Video V11 or it's a WMV file. Some people select MP4 or AVI. Um, I have done it before, but I find the video size is kind of messy up and uh, sometimes there's issues with codecs and I don't like to mess with them so I like to just select the Windows media video file the quality may be a bit of a loss I don't know my videos are pretty high quality considering um, so if you're gonna follow my steps use Windows media video v11.wmv so now once you have double clicked on WMV file, you're going to get a lot of more options here. These are going to be basically your bit rate. The higher the bit rate, the higher quality of the video. And obviously you're going to want more bit rate for higher resolution video. So there are two optimized for 720 or 1080p. So they are highlighted there in red. If you want to use 720p, click on the six megabits per second HD um, selection once. Or if you want 1080p, click on eight megabits per second HD. Again, make sure you only click once on the selection you want. And then what we're going to do is further customize those rendering options. So under Underneath that, you're going to see a button that says Customize. I want you to go ahead and click that button. So once you click on Customize, there's going to be five different tabs that appear in the bottom. We're going to leave the audio one alone. We're going to go ahead and click on Video. Up until this point, whether you wanted your video to be 1080p or 720p didn't matter. It does matter now just for a quick moment because there is one change we have to make in this video tab, and that is the image size. If you want it to be 720p, it's going to be as simple as clicking on the image size and scrolling down to High Definition in brackets 1280 by 720 clicking that, and then you're all set. If you want it to be 1080p, there is another step you're going to have to make. So first things first, you're going to go ahead and click custom. 
Again, this is only assuming you want your video to be 1080p. So assuming you clicked on custom because you want your video to be in full 1080p, there are two things where you have to change. That is the width and pixels and the pixel aspect ratio. Basically, Sony Vegas wants to render a video in 1440 by 1080p, which will put a black border on the left and right of the screen and make your image a square. You don't want that. You want to take up the full screen. So you're going to make that 1440 a 1920. That'll be full HD. Pixel aspect ratio is 1.333. That again will be the letterbox format and you're going to change that to 1.0. Once you have that set, whether or not you chose 720p or not, underneath that there's an option for video smoothest. Again, whether you chose 1080p or 720p, this has to be done. Change the video smoothest from 90 all the way to 100. This is just going to make the video a little bit more crisp now the last and final thing that we need to change here is the bit rate now the higher the bit rate the better quality in general but also the bigger the file size the shitty thing is, is that YouTube tends to kind of lower the quality of videos automatically so you don't need to go too high um, if I'm doing a 720p video I'll use 6 to 8 M for 720p uh, if I'm using 1080p video I'll do 8 to 10 that'll just make the video quality pretty good but not overly good because it doesn't matter it's going to be taking longer to render in a larger video size it's going to go on YouTube and it's not going to look any better so try not to go above that once that's done just go ahead and click OK and we are done with our render settings now the last and final thing before we are ready to render is to choose our output file. Now underneath, once you click OK, you'll be back to the menu for render as and you'll see render options and output format. Those are all ready to go. Above that you're going to see output file. You're going to see the folder. You can choose where the file saves and then you can choose the name. So all you do is hit render and you're ready to go. So make sure you selected the right folder, selected the name and hit render and then you are all set. Once that video is rendered, you'll see a progress bar pop up showing your percentage and how much time is remaining. Once that is done, you can open the folder and that video is now ready to be uploaded to YouTube. Basically following these settings, you are now able to fully record and render any videos you want. If you want to do live commentaries and video, you are set to go. Now there are going to be some times when you want to do a video actually such like this video or some of my other videos where I do video on top of audio where they're not necessarily recorded together. They may be recorded separately, in which case you will need a third party audio recording software you can use the generic sound recorder that comes with Windows, but I prefer something a little bit more advanced and this is definitely the best audio editing program for Windows and that is Audacity. You can download it for free. Just go to Google and type in Audacity. You can download it for free. It is extremely advanced. Once you get it installed, open it up and make sure that you have the headset as the default speaker and the default microphone and above that, you want to make sure the microphone and the speaker levels are at least in the middle. Um, the uh, speaker will obviously be how loud the playback is from, from Audacity. The one to the right is the microphone, how loud you want the mic to be. You don't want the mic to be recording too loud but you don't want it to be too quiet. So I usually go a little bit more than halfway. Audacity is capable of doing many different things, but we are gonna keep it simple because we really just wanna record our voice. All you really have to do is when you are ready to record, hit the record button, and when you're done recording, hit stop. Now, when you are done your recording, basically you can't just save it as a audio file. You have to export it. So all you're gonna do is click on file and export. You're gonna get a default option. You're gonna go ahead and hit export once you've chosen where you want it to save. Keep it as the default WAV file. You don't need anything really, really too high quality because you're only recording your voice it's pretty good quality anyway so go ahead and hit export once you're ready hit ok and then find the file and you can just drag it into your sony vegas when you are ready and then you are good to go but that's pretty much gonna do it for me guys i hope you enjoyed and i hope you learned something i hope this will help some eager new computer gamers to get on youtube and start recording and editing their footage as you can see for a lot of gamers who do specifically live commentary it's actually not that hard to do they you know there's not a lot of work that actually goes into getting setting up and editing for it there are obviously a lot more advanced editing techniques and i'd be happy to make another instructional video showing you some more advanced techniques in sony vegas that i've learned throughout my year or so of doing some video editing and if you'd like to see that please let me know in the comments other than that a lot of work went into making this video so i'd appreciate it if you left me a like rating below and uh, that would show a lot of support. And of course, if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe, check out some of my other videos and see what you think. And uh, like I said, subscribe if you're new. But other than that, I don't have a whole lot more to say. So I hope you guys all have a good day. Peace.